Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time. Welcome to the most epic drone fight in 2016, DJI Phantom 4 fighting against the unique Typhoon H. Let's just see which one is the better drone. Actually, you should keep one thing in mind. You are watching one out of 10 videos in total that I shot about these two drones. You can find the videos right there in the playlist or you can find the entire video a link at least pointing at it in the video description below and next to that you have all product links in the video description below as well and right now enjoy the episode don't forget to leave a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe to never ever miss any upcoming episodes again stay tuned fly safe before we actually talk about the normal safety features let's first of all focus on the redundancy as everyone is talking about redundancy these days the main redundancy feature of the unique Typhoon Age is its hexacopter design. The copter has six propellers instead of only four and that has a reason and is not only looking cool. The reason for that design is that if you are having any problems with the motor or with one of the propellers, the copter is still able to land safely. It won't fall out of the sky while a normal quadcopter with four propellers would just fall out of the sky. I gotta be honest with you, I have flown many different models already from many different manufacturers and I never ever had an ESC, a motor problem and never a broken propeller or something like that in air. But still having six propellers for the safety is something very handy to have. Let's right now take it to the test. Let's just see if it can um, properly hover with only five propellers. But because we can't just trick the machine, we just have to pretend that this one, this propeller is fixed on there, but it's not fixed. It's just gonna pop off after the takeoff. So let's just see what happens. Will it be able to hover safely? Let's just take it to the test. That was the first propeller. <laughs> and let's lift up the unique. Five propellers only, and we can see that the Typhoon Age is not crashing. It's hovering around the place like normally. That's actually pretty cool, I must say. Even though I never had a motor error, but having the opportunity to lose one propeller without any further damage, that is pretty rockin' exciting. Let's just see whether I can land it safely or not. That was really nice, Unique. Many online comparisons say that DJI's Phantom 4 does not offer any redundancy. The fact is, they are wrong. Of course DJI added redundancy features, but we would have to open the Phantom 4 up to see them. Inside of the copter, DJI added a second compass and a second IMU unit. In case of a compass error or a system failure, the Phantom 4 automatically switches over to the redundancy unit and safely continues its flight. Flyaways and all kinds of computer errors now belong to the past with the DJI Phantom 4. What happens if the remote controller signal gets lost in flight? DJI pilots can choose between three scenarios. The copter either stops and hovers, it can auto land or it can fly back heading for the home point using the return to home function. But where is the home point actually? DJI sets the home point to be at the takeoff position of the aircraft. Within the DJI GO app you can as well set a new home point in flight or you can set the home point to follow the position of your remote controller. But there is even more to say. If there are trees or houses or other high obstacles in the way, how can we avoid crashing into them? DJI pilots have the opportunity to manually set up the return to home height in the DJI GO app before the flight. Set it higher than the highest obstacle surrounding you and you'll be good to go. Unique pilots have to choose the return to home method while the home point of the Typhoon H always follows the position of the remote controller. Unique and I really did not expect that does only feature a fixed return to home height. And as if that wasn't risky enough already, the set height is very low, 10 meters only. I was honestly shocked when I took it to the test. I would almost call this gross negligent. And the unique Typhoon Age has another disadvantage. When taking a look at DJI's Go app, we always find a map at the bottom of the screen, always displaying the drone's current position, the current position of the home point and all surrounding no-fly zones. None of that information is displayed on the unique Typhoon Age's display which is quite disturbing. There is no map at all. There is no way to track anything. And why is there no way to display a map? That is pretty simple to understand as well. There is no way to connect the unique Typhoon Aegis remote controller to the internet as the Wi-Fi is already using the video signal of the unique Typhoon Age, and that is actually a serious problem. In flight, it is often hard to tell when to actually return to home if flying far away. On the one hand side we want to fly far out, on the other hand we cause our drone to land somewhere else 
if the battery dies on the way back home. That's why DJI implemented the Smart Go Home feature. It calculates how much flight time is left depending on how far we are away from the home point in real time. A colored bar always displays how long we can continue our flight. The app automatically notifies the user once he has to return home. The only safety feature, the unique Typhoon H features, is a simple notification that pops up once a certain low battery level is reached, not even displaying the exact level in percentages. If the copter at that time is still far away, it's left to chance whether it can make its way home or whether it lands somewhere else on the way back. And over water or streets or other inaccessible or busy areas, this can result in a loss of the Typhoon H or even in a bad accident. The DJI Phantom 4 has two front cameras built into the legs that can spot obstacles up to a range of 15 meters. A colored bar pops up that notifies the pilot once an obstacle is detected. It gets bigger and starts beeping the closer we get. Once we get too close, the Phantom automatically stops and hovers. Next to that, DJI's obstacle avoidance is pretty helpful during return to homes. If you forget to set the correct return to home height and fly straight at an object, the Phantom 4 will automatically detect it and fly around or above it. There's one disadvantage though, the system only functions during daytime. The unique Typhoon H has two sonar sensors installed. They can spot objects and avoid crashes, even at night, but with a range of 3 meters only it is almost unusable as the stopping distance is just too short. It only functions when flying super slow. Next to that there is no on-screen notification at all. Finally, you should keep in mind that sonar waves function better when they hit solid objects like houses. Sound absorbing surroundings as treetops can get the unique Typhoon H into trouble. Take a look at this test clip that I recorded during testing the Typhoon H's sonar system. It almost caused a crash to happen. As if that wasn't enough already, DJI even adds another safety system to the Phantom 4, named Vision Positioning System VPS. Two cameras and two sonar sensors at the bottom help the Phantom to stay in place and to hold its position in flight. It works until a height of 10 meters. The system is awesome for indoor or low to the ground flights and adds an incredible level of stability to the Phantom 4. The only con? When flying closely over water, the DJI Phantom 4 can start to drift a little as it cannot properly track a clear pattern and you cannot disable it currently, but DJI says they are working on a fix already. Unique together with Intel announced a system named RealSense actually already quite a few months ago and there are not that many infos and details and that's why we can't focus on that system too much. But let's just cover the basics shortly. It is a 360 degrees obstacle avoidance system. Actually it's supposed to be one of those systems as there will be only front sensors again but they will be turning and moving with the movement of the copter. So let's just say it's it's half 360 degrees obstacle avoidance system. But there is something to say. First of all, the copter will cost about $2,000 together with that system. And next to that, the range is very limited to 10 meters only. And that is a big con. As we all know, the DJI Phantom 4's obstacle avoidance system has a range of 15 meters and every meter is worth the money. Why is that so? Simply because if you are flying towards an obstacle and the sensors just uh, notice that there is an obstacle, they need to stop down, they need to pull the brakes. But we all know that the Phantom or the unique Typhoon H are drifting in air. And as we know, the Phantom with 15 meters of range will be able to fly a lot faster than the unique Typhoon H with only 10 meters of range. And again, it's not even installed to the basic version of the unique Typhoon H, only to the pro version that is not even on the market yet. That's a problem. And I can't focus on that issue anymore. The rating? Unique tries to catch up with DJI, but its safety features are premature compared with the Phantom 4. Only the hexacopter design really earns some points. Finally, the Typhoon H gets 3 out of 10 points. DJI is far ahead of Unique when it comes to in-flight safety. The many years of developing different system, the different stages from the DJI Phantom 1 over Phantom 2, Phantom 2 Vision, Phantom 2 Vision Plus, Phantom 3 Standard, Phantom 3 4K, Phantom 3 Advanced, Phantom 3 Professional and finally the Phantom 4 have added a level of professionalism that is hard to beat. DJI gets 8 out of 10 points. Night and full 360 degrees obstacle avoidance would be the only wishes of mine for future models. Thank you guys for watching this video. Feel free to leave a thumb up and feel free to subscribe right now to never ever miss any upcoming episodes again. If you feel like you can't resist right now and you need to purchase your copter of choice, you can find the product links right down there in the video description below. And if you still don't know which copter to buy, you should continue to watch my videos as there are nine leftover videos that 
actually compare these two drones. You can watch them right now, and I'm just going to stop talking, and we're going to continue next video. There you go.